tonight at 7 and only right here on CBS4. We're presenting an hour-long documentary, Bonded by Tragedy, 30 Days in Surfside, which tells the story of how families and friends coped with the search for their loved ones. Yeah, simply heartbreaking. In this clip, we hear from two women who describe the first time they were taken to the collapse site and the realization their friend was almost certainly gone. Under a police escort, the buses would travel the short route from the hotel to the collapse site. A special viewing area was cordoned off for the families on the patio of the building just north of the Champlain Towers. When they arrived, Lisa Schrem and Rachel Sabag scanned the pile. And it just looked like 9-11. You saw it. there was about 200 men and women working on the hill. But their eyes were drawn to a corner of the building still standing, and they could see what remained of Estelle's apartment, her blue and purple suitcases readily apparent against a gray backdrop. It was a little bit overwhelming. Her couch still had the pillows on the, on the couch. The cushions were still on her couch, but just that bedroom part tipped off. That was hard to see. Her apartment's there. The valance of her curtain is, is blowing in the wind. Her two suitcases are on the edge of the, the, the ledge of where her apartment was. 30 feet left or right, that's, that's the essence of life. That's it. That's, that's all God's got for us. 30 feet left or right decides whether you live or die. Just incredible. CBS 4's Jim oh. Defeaty joins us now. Jim, you spent months working on this project. Just a remarkable moment we saw it there. What else can you tell us about it? So let's talk about uh, Lisa Schrem and Rachel Sabag. They were both friends of Estelle Hedaya, who ended up being the 95th and last victim uh, found in this tragedy, or 98th victim last found in this tragedy. And what's remarkable about their story is that they were living in New York. They weren't, they weren't family, they were friends. They flew down because both as single women and Estelle was single, they felt they needed to be here for their friend. They used to go out, they used to go on vacations together, and they always had a bond that said, you know, leave no woman behind. That was sort of their mantra. And as a woman code, they wanted to be there for their friend. And so they sat in that room and waited for news as to what happened to Estelle, and it came Came almost 30 days later. Jim, what else can we expect uh, to see tonight? So, so much of what has been focused on with regard to Surfside is dealt with why did the building collapse and the efforts of first responders on the pile to try to rescue individuals. What I wanted to do was do something different. I wanted to take you several blocks from the site to that family room, the place where they kept all the family members who waited for news. They received twice daily briefings. The public received one set of briefings. The families received a different set of briefings. They were given information every single day. We take you inside that room with, with video that's never been seen before, with interviews with the first responders who were briefing them, and you just walk away with the understanding that everybody, no matter whether you were a firefighter or whether or not you were a family member, everyone in that room was affected and will be affected for the rest of their lives by what happened in Surfside. We wanted to give viewers a sense of that, and that's what I think we did here. Yeah, we're going to get an education on personal oh, wow. stories and certainly on, on how things unfolded there. Jim, thanks very much. We look forward to it. And don't miss the CBS 4 News one hour original bonded <clears throat> by tragedy 30 days in Surfside. That's tonight at 7 here on CBS 4.